I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're all at home, safe at home, staying at home, not going out anywhere. Social distancing, that's the only thing that can really protect us now, besides a strong immune system. Anyway, today let's talk about headaches and let's talk about migraines. These are things that plague millions of people across the world. The easy way out is pop paracetamols, pop crocins and all of these things. I'm not here to take away the pain and suffering of someone who goes through daily migraines or headaches. But it's always good to look and address the root cause of why you could possibly have a headache or a migraine. Now both of these are different. We're going to start off with headaches. It is not a brain problem. There is no problem with your brain. It is an organic physiological change in your brain. It is also your body's way of telling you that something in your body isn't right. It is functional and it's temporary. Okay. We've all grown up now over the last couple of years where the moment we get a symptom, okay, we immediately take a quick fix. Okay. Yes, we get relief. We're able to go on with our day. We don't have to compromise our work schedules, our travel schedules or whatever it is that we're doing, but we compromise the intelligence of our body to identify and address the root cause of why I'm constantly getting headaches. And then it starts building up more and more and more creating a lot of problems. So let's start off with headaches. What could be the potential root causes? Now there could be several of them. Several of them, we're gonna start off with allergies. An allergy can also be a root cause for someone having a headache. It could be a peanut allergy, it could be a particular food. So sometimes when you get headaches, it's also, net, it's also good for you to identify what are the foods you ate in the last one hour, the last three hours, or the last four, four hours. We've had people with headaches and we've stopped gluten and the headaches have disappeared. We found out that certain people with continuous headaches, we stopped peanuts, or we stopped almonds, you know, we found out that there was a particular food that when we stopped that food, the headaches disappeared. Some people with dairy, you cut out dairy completely, the headaches went. Now this doesn't mean everyone just gets off these foods and eliminate a potential food that could be causing an allergy, which could be causing a headache for you. So allergies is one. Number two, emotional stress, anxiety, fear. We need to understand that. What happens when we're stressed? The muscles around our neck, our upper back, our cervical, all of this, it tightens up and it restricts blood flow to the brain, causing an organic physiological change. For some people, it could be a headache. For some people, it could be brain fog. For some people, they could just feel an immediate drop in their energy levels. So stress, emotions, physical, you know, fear, all of these things are real when it comes to headaches. We all know what we need to do that to, to do to do to solve that problem. We need to slow down our inhale, slow down our breathing. Rapid breathing means we're in stress mode, sh making our breathing a little slow through your pranayama, meditation, prayer, all of these mechanisms that you're aware of can help you address your headache at the same time. So it's a simple example, children going through their 10 standard board exams, university exams, they tend to get most of their headaches there. Of course, that's a combination of stress, sleep deprivation, not eating the right foods at that point, too much of caffeine as stimulants. Anyway, that's about stress. High blood because that's bad for your heart, that's bad for your heart and that's even bad for your brain. So we need to understand addressing stress and blood pressure. You're constantly eating sweet stuff so your blood sugar levels are rising and then your pancreas produce insulin and your blood sugar levels fall right down again causing a headache. So if you have constant headaches you even may want to check your blood sugar levels. <clears throat> a hangover. You binge drink alcohol, you drink irresponsibly, you kind of get this headache Okay, it's called a hangover, you have a headache and then you start taking tablets just to feel better. So you need to understand that's a lifestyle change that you've got to responsibly make. Infection. Certain kinds of infections in the human body can also cause headaches. So sometimes if your headaches are persistent, you want to get your CBC done and share it with your doctor to address if there are any issues in your blood work. Okay, then you have eye strain. You have constant headaches, you want to get your, your eyes checked by the doctor sometimes. You have a number by wearing your glasses, the headaches disappear immediately. Nutritional deficiencies, that's a basic of course. If you have any nutritional deficiency, it can result in any physiological or physical problem in the human body. We've noticed that a lot of our clients who have constant headaches, you know, their B12 levels are very low. So we don't just put them on a B12, we put them on a B complex because you need a B1, you need a B3, you need a B5 and a B6 also to take care of headaches. So if you have a deficiency in your B vitamins, you could be having headaches. So you look at nutritional deficiencies. One of the most common reasons for headaches and migraines, toxins and poisons in your body. So if you are not detoxifying, if your diet is full of crap food, junk food, preservatives, chemicals, white sugars, refined oils, you are accumulating toxins and poisons in your body. Even a slow liver, we notice this with a lot of fatty liver patients. 
that fatty liver patients tend to have headaches because your job of your liver is to clean out toxins from your body. If we keep toxins in our blood, in our body, we can get headaches and migraines. Let me give you a simple example. Most people who start a detox program, they initially get a headache in the first couple of hours. People who are also new to fasting, they report back and say, hey Luke, we're fasting, but we got this terrible headache. And I just tell them, continue. Your body is detoxifying and anything that needs to come out of your system first needs to get into your blood. So if I'm detoxifying my liver, the toxins will get into my blood to get out of my system. The moment toxins hit your blood, you will get a headache. You will get a dull throbbing in your head. So the headache is part of the detoxification process, signifying that you have toxins in your body. As you move on to day two of the detox, the headache disappears because you have less toxins in your body. So cleaning your system and detoxifying is very important. Caffeine and stimulants. The more coffee and the more tea that you drink, the more caffeine, stimulants, Red Bulls that you take to keep you awake because you're sleep deprived or you're low on energy can also cause headaches because this is how it works. The stimulant will shoot you right up. After the effect of the stimulant comes down, you have a crash. That crash can become a headache or a migraine for a lot of people. So you need to see how sensitive you are to caffeine, tea and all of that stuff and eliminate it or reduce it until your headaches get better. Of course, sleep deprivation, we know that. If you can have headaches only because you're sleep deprived. You can have headaches only because you didn't sleep well last night, so fix that. A sedentary lifestyle as well. When you have a sedentary lifestyle, you have poor blood circulation. If you have poor blood circulation, you keep more toxins in your system. Okay, you don't have enough of blood reaching the brain, you have a headache. So we look at fixes of B vitamins, magnesium, water intake. I know people who are dehydrated and they have headaches. I know people who have a 1% drop in their water intake and they get headaches. Classic example of athletes getting headaches when they're dehydrated. Now there's something called a tension headache. Imagine this, I'm tense about something, I'm constantly thinking, I'm studying for something, I'm watching bad news all the time, I'm scrolling down social media and looking at more and more fear building up. This is what happens, my muscles in my neck my back and my cervical tense up. They get really tense because I'm constantly in a tense mode, okay? And then all of a sudden, I've stopped scrolling down, okay? My muscles, my blood is reduced, my blood flow. That's what happens in a tensed muscle. Try clenching your entire body now really tight, really, really, really tight. Okay, hold on as far as you can and then suddenly release it. Now in a tension headache, when that stress period is over, you've held so much of stress in you, okay? your blood vessels dilate and rush blood to your brain. And that sudden rush of blood to your brain can create the most severe headache and even a migraine. That is why tension shoulders, your back. You gotta get it released. Some people have a cervical problem. The side effect is a headache or a migraine. The root cause is the cervical. You get the cervical fixed, you get rid of the headache. Okay, and in this muscle tension, guess what gets irritated? The nerves, and the nerves also send a signal of pain to your brain. Any nerve in the body get, that gets pinched, crossed, or basically irritated, a signal of pain in your brain. So look at your cervical as well. Now when it comes to a migraine, this is very physiological. There are different kinds of migraines. Some of them are also caused when a patient gets inflicted on the head. A head injury, a road accident, trauma, these migraines tend to continue. But for everyone else where the migraines move from the left to the right side, it stays concentrated in one particular time, we have to understand it's also physiological. There's a beautiful study done on compulsive workers and perfectionists. So for example, you're a perfectionist or you're a compulsive worker. That means you don't relax until you finish the task. Okay, a perfectionist will not relax until something is perfect. So that tension, while they're in that mode of compulsive work or being a perfectionist, builds up again neck, cervical, upper back muscles, trapezius, and it starts wearing out those nerves. And sometimes the blood flow, when they suddenly relax, like the perfectionist suddenly realizes that, okay, now everything is in place after getting angry, irritated, holding on to stress, shouting, whatever it is, or a compulsive worker, you have this crazy blood flow that goes to the brain. And now it doesn't have to be equally distributed. It could distribute in one particular vessel on the left side of your brain or the right side of your brain leading to your migraine. Now that's not the only cause. All the causes of headaches can also be the potential causes of a migraine. So we need to understand that relaxing, that's why most people have neck problems. At any point in the day, try to move your chin back and you'll find like pins and needles happening. That means you have too much of tension and stress in your upper back, cervical and your neck. 
It's a simple test. That's why in the morning, the best thing that you can do are your neck rotations, very gently. Your chin to your chest, all the way back, side, and then complete rotations. This is part of yoga. This should be part of everyone, especially if you have a sedentary lifestyle, you sit with the wrong posture. Just by solving these problems can solve a headache and migraine in most cases. So if you, if you move your head back and you have like pins and needles, you know right then that you have a buildup of tension in your shoulders. That's why we stretch. That's why we do yoga. That's why we get massages to help us reduce the stress and tension that builds up in not these muscles, but any mu muscle in the human body. Any muscle in the human body that holds on to stress will cause a problem in the peripheral areas of your body. But because we use our neck the most and our head, and all of this up, we hold most of our stress over there. So that's extremely important. We found that magnesium works very well for people who have and Most people who have migraines somehow usually tend to have a deficiency of magnesium. So you can take a magnesium citrate, a glycinate, or you can get magnesium in peanuts and chickpeas and almonds and pumpkins and sunflower seeds in green leafy vegetables and all of that stuff. But finally, it comes down to your lifestyle. Look at your nutrition. Look at your exercise, look at the quality of your sleep, your posture during your day, even someone with a wrong posture. People sit through meetings like this, the entire meeting, okay? And then they wonder why they have a headache or migraine later. Posture is everything. When we have the right posture, we allow oxygen to flow freely between every single cell of the human body. When we're in the wrong posture, we deprive that. Less oxygen, more acid buildup, more acid buildup, more toxins, more toxins, more inflammation, more inflammation, more headaches, and more migraines. So it comes down to that, sleep. Now pressure point, acupressure, acupuncture can also work beautifully, beautifully for migraines and headaches if it's persistent in you. Because again, what does it do? It releases tension from tensed up muscles that can cause a possible headache or migraine. So these are little things that you can do. Get the basics right, okay? The classic is, example is most headaches are stress-induced. The others are nutritionally deficient induced. Okay, so put these things, these points together, analyze. The next time you get a headache, instead of rushing and getting a quick fix for you, okay, you wanna reflect, what did I do in the last three hours? What did I eat? How tense, how, how, how tense was I? How was my sleep last night? Did I wake up feeling rested or was I sleep deprived? What did I eat last night for dinner can also result in your headache today. How much of caffeine did I consume? These are little questions, diagnose. You are your best doctor. By me saying that, that doesn't mean that we don't need doctors, we don't need medicine. I'm just trying to say that your body gives you a mechanism to diagnose possibly what could be the problem for you. Of course, you can't figure it out. Go and get all the assistance and all the treatment in the world that you need. But when we reflect and step back, we are able to identify and relate to the root cause of all our problems. You know why? Because our body is constantly giving us signals. But we're too busy to hear those signals. We're too busy to, to see those signals. And even if we get a signal, we're too lazy to do something about it. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And I want to add one more point, okay? We've noticed this with a lot of people who have headaches and migraines. Like I always tell people, do not hold the phone on your ear and speak. Please understand, EMF is real. Okay, today we're waking up to deception and fraud at a macro level across the globe. There are hundreds and hundreds of studies which have, been, which have proven EMF and the damage to our brain, headaches, migraines, inflammation, and MRIs. A simple study of a young child who holds a phone to his ear or her ear for two minutes can create inflammation on an MRI patch. An MRI is done on this brain for the next eight hours. This is not okay. But everyone selling you your gadget, they're sitting on trillions of dollars and they have enough of money to push away the research that is good for us. So you need to understand a lot of people, they use Bluetooth, wireless, Wi-Fi headsets, they have headaches and migraines. This could be a potential cause for it. If it is, don't use it. If it isn't, go ahead. Me, for example, I can never hold the phone to my ear. I cannot use a Bluetooth, wireless headphone, none of that stuff. I get a headache like this. So that could be a potential root cause for you as well. Please understand, these things are far from natural. It will create some physiological, physiological or organic change in your brain patterns or whatever it is. The world out there is interested in selling you something, okay? If they were interested only in only your health and only your health and welfare, a lot of products that we have today wouldn't exist. So let's wake up to reality, let's wake up to the truth and understand that there has to be a fair balance between nature, which is us, and everything else which is man-made. 
Have a great day, everyone.